Um, what do you remember of the captured German air aircraft exhibition in 1945? Oh, a lot, because I was very involved. Um, we had brought all the aircraft back. Um, I was one of the pilots who was mainly involved, there were only two really involved in bringing back the jets to Farnborough. And, um, and then we had the exhibition and um, we were each assigned, uh, when I say each, we only had four pilots in aeroflight at that time, uh, an aircraft to demonstrate during that week. And I was demonstrating the Heinkel 162, which was a little Volksjäger. And um, I think it was the Thursday or the Friday, I'm not sure which, um, the chap who was demonstrating an ME-262 uh, suddenly had a sore throat and couldn't fly. So I was asked to take on the 262 and handed over the 162 to somebody who had flown it, but not a lot. He had been a prisoner of war. Now, I really don't know what he was doing at Farnborough because he certainly wasn't what I call up to date with what went on. But I briefed him to the best of my ability. But unfortunately, on the day, he got carried away a bit, I think, with the occasion and uh, decided to do what I'd advised him not to do and we had a fatal accident. So that rather marred uh, the last part of the exhibition, but otherwise uh, it was a great success. So there was a flying display, were you, were you doing aerobatics? In That's it? correct, yes. And the Heinkel 162 wasn't a great aerobatic airplane because the jet engine, the BMW 003 jet engine, would only stand three seconds of inverted flight. So you had to get round pretty quick, but it had a marvellous rate of roll, so that was no worry, really. Oh, OK. Uh, the testing or, or evaluation of German air aircraft ended in 1946 after the crash of the Dornier 335. If that hadn't have happened, do you think testing would have continued, or had you learned everything that you could learn? No, I think we'd sucked the orange dry, frankly, yes. And, um, there wasn't much more for us to, to learn from it. Um, the, the reports that you and your fellow pilots wrote, wrote on air, enemy aircraft, how was this dis information disseminated to frontline squadrons? Uh, through reports, or did it involve touring airfields with uh, you know, captured aircraft to show... Before pilots? the war, we had some captured aircraft, of course, which had crash-landed in this country or inadvertently flown into one of our airfields by mistake. And uh, when we evaluated these, we went round the um, squadrons, and to which were involved in combat with them, and told them what we thought were the weaknesses of these aircraft, the Achilles heels. And uh, so all that happened before the end of the war. After the war, uh, they were just really museum pieces. And uh, we, to my knowledge, we didn't go around disseminating any information. The reports were available to them, but there was no specific requirement to brief them on them. Okay. Was there any, was there any German air aircraft you evaluated uh, during the war where you thought, this is so much more advanced, we should just put it into production ourselves in the UK? Oh yes, the, um, the one which was, which staggered us frankly with, with its um, quantum jump and performance, was the jet, twin jet, Messerschmitt 262. When I tested it here at Farnborough, it was 125 miles an hour, faster than any Allied fighter. Now this puts it in a league by its own. It is virtually untouchable. And that rattled us, frankly, to find that. And um, it's just as well that uh, they were unable to produce them fast enough um, to really make a nuisance of themselves. And uh, anyway, at this stage in the war, which is very late, um, they were running out of, the Germans were running out of pilots and running out of fuel. But the thought of them have perhaps being, having pilots and fuel and a lot of these jets was a bit sobering. <laughs>
Uh, what's your opinion on the, the German sort of flying wing designs, the Horton 9? Uh, would you think they would have made a good... Oh yes, I, I believe the Horton brothers, um, who were specialists in the tailless aircraft really, or all wing aircraft, um, it's a difficult formula uh, to get right. Uh, but when you get it right, it pays huge dividends. And the Horton 9, they had certainly, I think, got it right. Uh, and the great pity is that although we captured one which could have been repaired and it went to the United States, it was never brought to fruition. Uh, we know it has flown, it flew about four times, but not with what I call an experienced test pilot, which is a great pity. But um, I had great faith in the, in the Horton brothers as designers.